Τον μαρτύρον τες κρύες διακονίσασα, μαρτυρικός εμιμήσω τας αριστείας αυτών, διαθλίσεως έκθρον κατά παλέσασα, πόθεν βλιστάνης δαψιλός, χάριν αφθόνον αη Θεόφρον Αναστασία της προσιούσιν εκ πόθου, τη αρρωγή της προστασία σου. Today's topic is on the great martyr Anastasia and how she can teach us to be courageous in the world we live in today. Saint Anastasia was born into a very wealthy family. Her father, Pratakshatos, was an illustrian pagan. Living in an empire whose leader, Diocletian, valued paganism and believed purification was the outcome of burning animals alive, there were high social expectations for a family like Anastasia's. So for Anastasia's mother, Fausta, to be a Christian was a great risk. She was secretly a believer of Christ, a community which faced imprisonment and cruel persecution during those decades. Fausta learnt to be a Christian from a man called Chrysogonos, who knew the scriptures well, had many followers and gave wise instruction. Thus Anastasia had a role model in her mother, as well as a spiritual father who played an important role in her life. She was taught the Christian way of life by Chrysogonos and quickly adopted the mindset and way of life of a true Christian. She became dedicated to Christ from a young age. So when her father arranged for her to be married to a pagan called Publius, Anastasia was faced with a dilemma. Publius was not going to accommodate Anastasia's Christian way of life. He demanded she satisfy his desires, but Anastasia managed to convince him that she was ill. She managed to embark on a life of continuous sacrifice and compassion, even while married. Disguised as a poor working woman, she would go by night with a servant girl to visit the confessors of Christ in the prisons. By giving gold to the guards, she was able to gain entrance and with love and devotion, she would assuage the pain of those who had suffered torments for the name of Christ. She cleansed and bound up their still fresh wounds, washed their feet, and encourage them to persevere until the end of the contest, that they might partake in everlasting glory. When Publius found out that his wife was actually sneaking out of the house, he was furious. He was furious that she was demeaning herself in his name by consorting with the despised race of Christian martyrs. He locked her up and forbade all contact with the outside world. After three months, Anastasia was freed due to Publius's death at sea. Her first stop was to her beloved spiritual father who gave his blessing for her to disperse her fortune to those in need. Anastasia continued to attend to the confessors in prison and looked after their bodies when they martyred with due honour. The day came in which Diocletian decreed that all Christians still in prison in Rome should be put to death. All were slain in one night, some by drowning, others by fire or sword. When Anastasia arrived the next day at the prison, prepared to serve them as she had every day, and found all of them gone, she fell sobbing at the gate. She no longer cared to conceal that she was a Christian, such was her grief. She was immediately brought before the prefect of Illyricum, who, seeing that she was from the upper echelons of society, did not want to hand her to the executioners, but rather tried to win her over. She resisted and so she was sent to Diocletian's palace the next day where jewels were heaped upon her and fine clothing set before her, and on the other side of the room, instruments of torture were positioned to intimidate her. Anastasia remained steadfast and focused, despite not eating or sleeping, and when the chief priest was struck blind when he attempted to violate her, she was freed. Again, Anastasia met with fellow oppressed and persecuted Christians sharing a true fellowship, praying and guiding one another until she was finally beheaded, dying for Christ after supporting so many others in their resolve to do the same. There are many incredible examples that Saint Anastasia provides for us. Today's topic is to particularly draw out how she shows us to live courageously in the world we live. What world do we live in compared to Anastasia? 
She lived in a different world to us, however, there are some similarities. She was born in Rome in the time of Diocletian, who led the cruelest period of Christian persecution. Whilst we do not suffer in the ways these great martyrs did, we face our own sufferings in this fallen world, as every generation of Christians has in various permutations. We, who live in advanced economies in stable democracies in the Western world, face the constant and insidious temptation of secularism. What is secularism? Secularism separates God from the operation of society. It assumes that the world can exist without God. As a consequence of secularism, we live in a world which values the marginalization of God, his church and his work to private and invisible spheres. The temptation for us is that we mimic secularism in our own life. We begin to separate our life into various compartments that can easily exist without any reference to Christ and his church, without any hallmarks of our existence as a Christian. We tend to demarcate our lives into work, home, church, gym or soccer, certain friend circles, socializing, etc. And we can more comfortably identify ourselves in different ways in accordance to each context. But what did Anastasia do? We can see three aspects to her courageous saintliness. Anastasia was from a wealthy and well-regarded family. She would never have been exposed to prison conditions, to bloodied flesh, to raw suffering and unrelenting persecution. Yet she not only willingly faced the unknown, but courageously embraced it, recognizing her fellow Christians as her true peers and her closest friends rather than the pagans in her own social class. She stepped out of her own comfortable world into an uncomfortable one. Anastasia continuously stepped into a world where there was social ostracization, where physical tortures loomed, where death was threatened. She did not see an alternative though, even when she had countless opportunities and every reason to step back, given she'd been imprisoned twice and already suffered many tortures. Anastasia truly followed Christ's words when he challenged us to feed him when hungry, clothe him when naked and visit him in prison. If we shared the same sense of urgency in our imitation of Christ, we would be able to overcome the obstacles presented to us by our secular world. As St. Paul instructs, instructs in Romans, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The second aspect is Anastasia's youth. Anastasia would have been very young, under 20 years old. Age should not be a factor in our willingness to serve those around us, to attend to their needs. We are never too young or too old to speak to the vulnerable, to comfort the weakened. She showed incredible perseverance despite the obstacles she faced and won the crown of martyrdom for her courageous struggle. The third aspect can be explored through the lens given to us by secularism, which is that of the private versus public life. As Christians, this can be a false dichotomy. Our outward actions are, are a reflection and extension of our inner state. Saint Anastasia could not help but reveal herself as a Christian at the moment she discovered the martyrdom of her friends. Her grief was so visceral. God allowed for that moment at the right time for the right reasons. With prayer and fasting, she had the courage to withstand much more and converted numerous pagans through this timely revelation. However, even before that moment, Anastasia was a true Christian, even if she was working in secret. What can we see here? We may get concerned about how courageous we should be in professing our Christian faith publicly, considering the secular environment we find ourselves in sometimes. Anastasia did not live with such concerns, but rather sacrificed what she could to humbly and continuously serve the Lord. If we focus on truly being Christian and serving God, it will show itself and in the right time. We commemorate St. Anastasia on the 22nd of November. She is called a great martyr and the deliverer from potions for the great healings she worked. May she intercede for us.